Since you were born into the Army, quite literally, did you grow up thinking that you would be an Army spouse? That's actually kind of a funny story because my, my mom is the one that always tells this. And, you know, we moved a lot, a lot more than we even have yeah. as a, a married couple and with our family. Um, and so I always thought it would be so wonderful to live somewhere permanently and to be from somewhere. So I always said the opposite. I was told her, I will never marry anyone in the military. I'm going to settle down somewhere and live there forever. So. Here I am, <laughs> almost, 30, almost 34 That's years right. later. That's right, and we're yeah. still not there. <laughs> How many times have you moved? I really don't know. I would have to go back and count. But I know that I went to 10 different schools um, in the time that I, you know, growing up, and we moved very, very frequently. So I would have to go back and count, but it's a lot. We've had a little bit more... Um, groupings of time where we had a number of years together and that's been really nice for our children especially during their high yeah, school our, years. Yeah, our kids uh, unlike most military all graduated from the same high school they started it. Even Nate who went because he was here at Leavenworth and went to seventh eighth and ninth grade or se uh, eighth and ninth grade here. He went to the junior high junior here high. and then, yes. went, to and then went to City. Junction City yeah. High School for three years and went, it was yeah. done. Can you describe your journey as an Army spouse from when General Funk was Lieutenant Funk until today? I actually met him when he was 16, so it kind of goes back even further than that. But, um, oh, my journey as a military spouse, um, it's, it's been a great life. It's been an amazing life. I, I try to always make sure that I... I don't entertain the idea of you know having any regrets or wishing things had been different. Um, there were highs and lows, just like there are for everybody. Um, clearly, the deployments were some of the more challenging times. Although thank God she didn't say those were the highs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, um, but it's it's been a it's been a wonderful life and a very full life, and we've had lots of experiences and we've made lots of amazing friends. We've been able to contribute um, a lot, I feel like, to the world. Yeah. And, um, and it's been good. Throughout your journey, who were your mentors? Who did you look up to? And who helped you grow into the spouse you are today? I um, had a, an amazing mentor. Uh, Deanie Dempsey has been my mentor and dear friend and... Um, she was the spouse of Paul's battalion commander when he, we, he was a company commander. And so I just always tried to do what I thought Deanie would do. And of course, I never could do it as well as she did, but I always um, wanted to make her, her proud and just, just did things according to, you know, what she taught, which was really all about caring about people and building a team and being there for each other. And so she's been the greatest mentor. But I also would say that um, my peers and the other spouses have been amazing mentors to me as well. And uh, particularly, I think about during Paul's brigade command time when they were deployed for 15 months. And it was a very, very challenging time for all of us. And we all had little children. and. Um, the other brigade command spouses were really great friends and mentors to me, and we depended on each other a lot. So, uh, yeah, I'd say both of those things. I've heard about when your husband was a brigade commander and that it was really challenging to balance the stress, the responsibilities, and the burden of being an Army spouse. How did you maintain your balance and resiliency? Well, I, I will be honest with you and tell you that I don't think I did a very good job with the whole balance thing. I think that I talk about that a lot when I'm talking to military spouses now because I learned a really important lesson during that time about what happens when you allow a lot of stress to build to build up. And when I think back to that time, I think about um, 
that I really believed at that time that I could really will my way through and just plow my way through all of the stress and all the things that, that were going on, but realized shortly after Brigade Command ended that there was a, a really a physical toll um, on my body, and that's when I, I had some back problems that were really a consequence of just uh, having a difficult time sort of sort of balancing but had you asked me during the time I would have told you I was nailing it you know I <laughs> well, I was yeah. doing it and I was trying to take care of the kids and I was at the time working I haven't always um, worked during the the 33 plus years we've been married but I was at that time well that's not entirely true she's worked every minute yeah. of every day of that she wasn't always getting paid Right. But she did, in fact, uh, w worked every day at that. I mean, you know, she has to deal with me all, every day. Yeah, but I learned a lot about um, the importance of, of creating balance um, and, and really taking care of yourself and then really the consequences of what happens when you don't take the time to do that. Well, it was part of your, it's part of your journey though. And, yeah, and yeah. That's right. And so, yeah. you, I mean, if you think about that and what you, what you were able to do and, and how, how it led you to what you're doing now, which was right. your calling, mm -hmm. when you think about that, the, the ability to, to take that, that what was a very traumatic situation and then turn it into a positive strength building opportunity really talks about the strength of, of our military spouses and, and talks about not just the, the spouses in general but this one in particular how strong will strong willed she is <laughs> <laughs> but actually how just determined to to be a bright light in 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 the world and that's pretty cool really, when you think about it I mean the, she'll talk a little bit about the journey here in a minute I think but uh, if if the if the uh, if we don't, we need to, because she's reinvented herself multiple times. And really it's been the, the, her path, and she's found these things all along the way that, that feeds her mind. She's a lifelong learner, and, uh, and, and she's gone to her strengths, which she raised three amazing, well, four, three amazing ones in me, kids. And uh, so it's a pretty, pretty awesome journey along the way. So. And hopefully she'll tell a little bit of the story here. Thank you, babe. Sir, what advice do you have for military service members to support their spouses to find that balance and have resiliency while pursuing their passion? Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it. It's a journey. It's together. It's finding each mm -hmm. your, your strength and balance in the relationship as well uh, that you have to recognize. where Where is it? Do you need to go? Where is the compromise? Where is the, the, the safe space for each of you to, to thrive and learn and grow together and develop a plan forward that, that, is, that contributes yeah. to the world, as, as uh, Beth just said? That's what it is. So, you know, God gives you two ears and one mouth, and you ought to use them in proportion. Well, and I, I, I I'll add, you know, because really this is it's a lifestyle. I mean, being in the military is not just a job. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's a no, whole it's way a of life, and and it's a very it can be very demanding. And so, being able to really communicate with each other about what yeah. the the needs are, like there's a whole family that's a part of this journey, and you know, all of the members of the family have all different pieces of themselves that need to grow and develop and right. and they're experiencing everybody's experiencing their own um, things as life moves on and so to be able to collectively look at all of that and then yeah there's compromise that's required um, right yeah you're really putting a mosaic together is what you're doing and the and the puzzle pieces are beautiful and they're independently and when you bring them all together it, it really does work and that that's what I would say that's the journey we've been on for these 30 plus years yeah and you know it, sometimes the pieces might need to be chiseled out a little bit but they've always been in fact part of the part of the mosaic of where we're trying to go many military families worry about how the army life is going to impact their children what would you say about your kids' time as Army brats and how it impacted them? And can you also reflect on your time 
as an army brat and how it impacted you? I like to talk about this topic because I think it's so important. Growing up in the military, you know, I had a wonderful childhood, lots of great experiences, got to live in a lot of different places. Um, moving around was not easy for me. I was really shy. I had a lot of friends who were more outgoing and it was the, that path was a little bit easier for them. But really, I, I think that that's one thing that we have to remember as military families is just how different and unique our children are and how they're all going to experience it a little bit different and differently. And you know, there's so many amazing resources out there for our yeah. kids now, and that has really evolved over the years. You know, so not as many things, not as much recognition of how challenging the, the path can be um, back when we were little children. Yes, that's right. Much more so <clears throat> now, wouldn't yeah. you say? And we're ha you have to deal with single parent raisings because I, you know, I, I deployed six times, and, and each phase of the, the kids' lives, it impacted them differently. Right. Yeah, you know, when, they, when they were little, I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't meet Amanda physically until six months after I had been, because uh, we were at Desert Storm. And yeah. you know, we'd tell a story about you know, her dad and my dad and I sitting out and bawling watching the video of Amanda being born. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then you, know, the, you take that to the future and in their formative years when the kids were all teenagers and uh, we were gone to uh, another deployment, 0608, when I was a brigade commander. And that was a very, very different fight. That was the height of the surge. It was actually uh, a, a violent time. And so they were impacted by that for sure. Yeah. And you know, you, with today's communications, with the instantaneous communications back and forth now that, that, that are, exist, there is a little bit of things, because we wrote, I mean, if you just looked at yeah. the journey of media from our, from our first deployment yeah. to our last, well, it was letters, right? And yeah. so there was time and to put emotion. Oh, all yeah, you'd get order. them at different yeah. times. And, and, but, you know, <laughs> and the mail truck would come and you'd get six and then you wouldn't get one for another, mm -hmm. whatever. But there were times to put emotions on and deal with those. And by the time you, the, the, the next letter got there, you know, that thing was gone. To now, where these young men and women are deploying in, in yeah. the theater and they're in, they're in the environment the whole time. Mm -hmm. That is putting a diff different kind of stress on our families, I mm -hmm. think. But in, in our case, it's a, it, was, it was a great tool. I, I used to, so my, uh, the two boys actually played varsity sports all through high school. And uh, would deploy, I would get up at some god awful time just to listen to their football games. And uh, I can still recall mm -hmm. those moments. Cavalrymen learn to fight through their ears, but they also learn to love through their ears too. Yeah. They hear it. And so the selflessness of our soldiers should never be taken for granted. The things we miss, the stories we Mm -hmm. we can tell um, aren't easy sometimes. Those moments, um, are there things I would do again? Nope. Are there, are there others? Yeah. But those separations and missing those events are life changing. Now, on the other side, when we had time, we tried to show balance by doing that. Yeah. So our Fridays, when, we, when, when Nate finally graduated from high school, actually, when he went to college, we actually tried to s sneak up there and watch him play intramural yeah. sports and all kinds of stuff because when we got our Fridays back, we didn't know what to do for a yeah. while because that's how we spent, you know, what, uh, eight, ten years? Yeah. Every time we had an opportunity, we were at that. Yeah. You know, and so those moments are, are incredibly important. So... Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I think, I think it, it's a mosaic. Sometimes you've got to paint the picture through your ears, and that's okay. But it's, you know, that's why I get a little excited when people call the question our service, what it is we've done for this nation. 
I, I, I'll, I'll put that on anybody's plates. So, yeah, and, and our spouses uh, serve, and, and like, I've, like I've said for a thousand years, we, we'd be broke if we had to pay them for the, for the amount of time, effort, love, and uh, care that they've given to our nation, our units, the soldiers, the families, our schools, our clubs, and everything. If we had to pay that bill, it would not, it would not be possible. It would not. Uh, so, you know, uh, on that in that regard, we're lucky, so very lucky that they they serve alongside us. And you know, you enlist soldiers, but you re-enlist families, and they get a vote every year. It's uh, it's an amazing opportunity. And sometimes we're really vocal. <laughs> and sometimes, and sometimes you got to be, you know, you know that re-enlistment stuff. That's not as easy as it sounds sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, but thank God they do. Speaking of Desert Storm, ma'am, can you share what it's like to have your husband, father, and father-in-law all deploy to Desert Storm, knowing that heavy combat losses were expected? Um, that was a crazy time. And, and even though it was a really long time ago, I remember it so, so clearly because, um, you know, our, for our first two kids are really close in age. They're 17 months apart. So when Paul left on January the 4th um, of 1991, I had a one-year-old. I remember dropping him off that day. It was snowing, yep. it was cold. And then going back to the house, I was eight months pregnant with the one-year-old. And um, my dad was already over there. My father-in-law was already over there. And we were living in, out in Germany in a little, yeah. um, a little town in a little house. And I remember going back into the house with Matt and just thinking, this is going to be impossible. Like I, there's no way in the amount of time that just, it seemed like was ahead of us and just not being able to imagine that. But, um, we did do it. And I think the saving grace for me was being so busy that I just focused on taking care of the children. Um, he was a company commander mm -hmm. at the time, and so we had that aspect of it, which was it, it was very different than than it is now because mm. you know we didn't have all the technology and and all of those things, and so we um, also were not having to deal with like Paul just mentioned with you know the day to day. Although it was very difficult not having interaction very frequently. You know we get a phone call every few weeks or you know letters, but we also didn't. We weren't hearing about the fight every single day right. and I wasn't aware of every challenge that they were facing or when he was having a difficult day. So I was just like eye of the tiger you know with my and he was eye of the tiger with his and then um, you know, and that's, we just, we got through it and lots of, lots of family support, you oh, know, yeah. we, we shared that my mother-in-law, my mom and I, and actually my sister-in-law's um, husband was deployed at the time too. And it was just, it was something that we shared that we were going through together and, uh, and the memories. I mean, we still talk about it all. Oh yeah. This day. Yeah. Pretty funny time actually to be all be in Germany together at the same mm -hmm. time. It was different locations yeah, in Germany, but, but you know, travel to spend time together, and it was it was a pretty neat time. Yeah. How have you seen the role of the army spouse evolve from watching your mother as an army spouse to the role of the army spouse today? I love to hear their stories when they talk about what it was yeah. like when they first. Um, my I, my mom. They have so many cute cute stories, but um, I remember my mom didn't know anything about the military at all when she married my dad, and she was from a little um, coal mining town in Pennsylvania, and my dad was real, you know, serious, rule follower kind of guy, and, you know, he <laughs> told her that the company commander was going to come in and make sure there was no dust on their <laughs> furniture, which, of course, he wasn't was kidding, happening, but, yeah. but my mother took it seriously, and she said for the first few, few months, they were married she was dusting all the time just scared to death that he was going to lose his lose his job but um actually you know interestingly 
they talk about how at that time the spouses were assessed and included on OERs oh, yeah. as far as their participation went and you know how well they were and so um, things have changed a yeah. lot <laughs> thank goodness thank goodness things have changed a lot and um, you know I I I am a, a I'm someone who loves change and and things different being different and so I uh, have noticed a tremendous change since since even we got married oh yeah almost 34 years ago in fact we were just talking <laughs> about it with um, looking at this the schools now and what the the diversity of the spouse groups now and just how rich and and full and diverse and people that are working outside of the house inside of the house geographically oh, yeah. separated I, I like, agree with that wholeheartedly we're finally yeah. finally realizing the resource that we had there and and, and frankly the spouses are, are now coming to us with with advanced degrees and and the good news is we're, we're putting them to work in in all kinds of different ways which is which is great actually yeah and i i feel like um and someone had asked me about this recently but i you know early on as a military spouse there was a lot more of a sense of um there was what there was how an army spouse is or you know the the way you're an army spouse what that looks like and what i love so much about where we've come is that we understand that the army spouse is so unique and different and there is not just one way to support your soldier that you know that the the sky's the limit and yeah. the way to do it is the way that it works for your family but everybody has something to contribute but it won't always look like that's um, right the way someone else is doing it even from even from how well think about Jen how you are you're, you and Michael are serving together I mean that has changed dramatically too we have a lot more married dual, dual military, military. Mm -hmm. and we've done some great policy changes I think the, the, uh, the current SMA and the chief have done a remarkable job on changing some of the policies that are going to allow for um, six, both of it, both uh, spouses to succeed in our, our great army now, and I think that's just an incredible time in our army. And but from where it came yeah. to white gloves, yeah. you know, to you know yeah. wearing white gloves, and you had to have those to go to the Sunday tea or whatever it was, to now where we're we're, we're rolling up our sleeves and going to work and solving really hard problems. I mean. Some of the things the chief's working on, like spouse employment around mm -hmm. the nation and certifications, certifications. and transfer yeah. and transfer of their certificates from place to place. And we have spouses working with Congress and things like that to help solve some of these issues with our politicians. And, and, and it's it's really a time to be to to make the the army ready to go fight and win again for the next hundred years. And I, I'm. I am uh, very encouraged by those policy changes. Speaking of change, ma'am, and how you mentioned you like change, can you speak to how you've reinvented yourself? You know, I never really thought about it until more recently about that it was a reinvention of myself. Mm -hmm. I just think that I learned very early on in my life, moving so often that everywhere you went and every day was just like a new opportunity to um, just do your best and you know when you quickly realize that um, your resources are different everywhere you go the circumstances are different um, that you have to either adapt or you just find yourself always pining away for the past yeah. or wishing things were different hilarious because her dad who a wonderful man taught her met TC right so mission equipment troops so that's how she's applied herself okay she doesn't know that but it's ingrained oh. and so she looks at she does mission analysis and she looks at you know the, her equipment available what it is we're going to do she looks at the troops available you know She's enlisted the two kids to, to help her run her business. And, <laughs> and so uh, it, it's remarkable, but that's what an army kid learns from a, from a father who, or a mother, depending on which one is a soldier or both, 
and they come up and, and they learn that uh, mission yeah. analysis uh, traits and and so reinvention is probably more like um, recognizing the power of the resources on hand and then driving to with something you want to. I mean, if, you, if there was never anybody in the world that was driven, yeah. that one. Well, I believe that we can create a life we love. I, I firmly believe yeah. that. And when you believe that you can create a life you love, then it's just a matter of you know, adapting and swerving and being willing to detour and try something new and fail and try again. And um, I use the word fail, but I don't even really believe it's fail. But um, I think that we can create a life we love. We, we don't always um, get what we want. And sometimes it may feel like, you know, you're changing what you want, but if you're really just on the road to enjoy the journey, then it can roll out in a lot of different ways. What final advice do you have for today's military spouses based on your decades of experience? Enjoy the ride, it goes fast. Mm -hmm. uh, Re-enlist, uh, you know, remember to re-enlist by, by re-enlisting every day is make sure you're both still on the same journey. Mm -hmm. um, Understand that the kids serve too. Understand that your your family expands by the more responsibility, authority, and, and direction you get as you move up through the ranks, that your family expands. But at the end of the day, when it's all, when the curtain comes down and all the bright lights go out, it'll, you wanna be standing there with the one you love at the end of the journey. So my advice, remember what I said, God gives you two ears and one mouth and use them in proportion. But, uh, but make sure that you're in it for the right reasons. It is, because it's a selfless business. And it, and it is, in fact, uh, when you're called to serve the nation, to wear the cloth of our great nation, it is, in fact, uh, an honor. But it does not come cheap. And it, it, it must be earned every day. And, uh, you know, if you're going to bring everybody with you, make sure you finish with them all, too. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the only way to do this is as yourself. You know, the, really the only yeah. way That's is right. to, to show up every day as yourself. And, um, and then, you know, with that, you, and this is something that is just so important to me, and so I share with anybody who will listen to me, <laughs> is this, you, we have to take care of ourselves along the way. You know, we can't um, give so much that we don't nurture all of the pieces of ourselves because there is a way of it all catching yeah. up with you. And so um, be yourself and take care of yourself as well. And then leave your jersey in a better place yeah. every day. Yeah. Oh, I will say just one thing, and I don't know where this fits in, but I, I did think about it when you asked the question about, you know, trying to make, make it work in the military family and all the dynamics of everything, you know, and I, I, I mentioned briefly the thing about communication, but, you know, for me personally, you know, I was able to pursue a lot of my passions and a lot of my dreams because Paul recognized that I was part of this family team and that I had things that I loved also in addition to serving our military families and to, to um, supporting him. And so I feel like it's been a really wonderful mutual kind yeah. of support and respect, you know, I'm, I'm here to support him, but he's also, you know, how can I support you? And, um, and the only way you can really get there is if you communicate those needs and desires right. and loves and passions. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly right, you know. And you gotta have a lot of capacity. She's got a lot of capacity. <laughs> <laughs>